They say all is fair in love and war, but some battles leave no victor. In today's case, Mr. Outler says he's been battling his issues with Mr. McKenzie since they got together, and he's running out of ammunition. He says his relationship lacks passion, spontaneity, and reciprocity. Mr. Outler says that if something doesn't change, he will be waving the white flag on this relationship and moving on. Let's hear their case. Court is now in session. The Honorable Judge Starr presiding. Your Honor, this is the case of Outler versus McKenzie. Thank you very much, Mr. Outler and Mr. McKenzie. Mr. Outler, you are in court today because you say Mr. McKenzie is selfish, inconsiderate, and the biggest issue of all is the lack of intimacy. You need to see change or you will have no choice but to end this marriage. Down. Yes, down. I assume down means yes, Your yes, Honor. Yes, Your Honor. Absolutely. Mr. McKenzie, you are appearing in court today because you feel unvalued in this marriage. You say your husband can be controlling, demanding, and you feel your best is never good enough. Despite these issues, you still want to save your marriage. Yes, Your Honor. Okay, we seem to be at a crossroads, gentlemen. I'm not sure what has happened, but Mr. Owler, you're the plaintiff. Tell me why we're in court. <sighs> Your Honor, we, we we more at a crossroads. Look, we had a stop sign. Look, we had a detour. Look, we had a U-turn. Hello. I'm to the point now where I just can't take it. It's been three years. It's been three years, and we've been at this point where we keep having these conversations over and over, uh, and, and then they also make it seem just because you're the top, because I'm the dominant one, then I have to provide. No, that's not what I signed up for, okay? So something tells me you are not in for traditional... No. ...roles as society at, likes to outline them. Is that correct? I, I don't do the roles. All right, well, then, let me hear from Mr. McKenzie, because according to your husband... Roles are not for him. The best, my best is never enough for him. I can give this man my all. I can jump over hills. I can even run to heaven. And he will not appreciate nothing that I do for him. I give this man all my time. He expects, he expects so much out of me. I give you all that I can give you. It's like, I can't give you no more than that. So you know what I am hearing here is this, these are two people who care very much for each other. But we need to find out if there is common ground. Because you can love someone to the ends of the earth, but if there's no common ground, that relationship is destined to fail. Mm -hmm. Because trust is never going to come without common ground. You have to be able to compromise with each other. Let's go back a little bit. Mr. Outler, how did you all meet and what got you to the point that you are now in divorce court? Okay. Well, I actually was dealing with someone at the time, and the, they was dragging me along. Meaning you were in a relationship. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't call it a relationship. You know, a little snack. And I was... We was um, it was Pride Weekend, actually, here in Atlanta, and it's a major festival. You know, I'm a, one of the top MCs here in the city, and um, I'm just standing, and I see him dancing, and he just gyrating. And they was J-setting, the, the Vogue, or whatever they mm -hmm. be doing out there. And, and I just was staring, so the piece that I was with, my side, he was like, oh, that's what you want right there. And I was like, oh, stop playing with me. Stop trying it. Long story short, that's what I wanted. He exactly. came down here for vacation. He ended up staying. Okay, and yeah. now this is now over three years ago. Yeah. Three years ago, uh -huh. right? Now, this sounds like it was a good meeting. Mm -hmm. Did you feel the same way about Mr. Outler at the time? I feel like everything is like a grocery store. You get what you buy, you get what you see. So you, you, you decided to approach me. I was like, that matter of my business. You got what you asked for. Okay, so now, Mr. Outler, the stage is set. How do we end up in divorce court? What is wrong with this relationship? I know you say you're not the same, but no one is. So tell me what's wrong with this relationship. I honestly feel like a sugar daddy. I feel oh, okay. like I'm being used. You know, the Florida girls, they like city girls. You know what I'm saying? They, you know, they want something out of the situation. And I kind of felt like... Are you suggesting that your husband is be a little using city you? It, it comes off that way because it's like, or maybe that's not his intentions. How did this actually turn into a real relationship? Oh, he said he was ready for love, and I, I was ready too. Okay. You know, I was a whore all my life. I don't know nothing about no love. I don't. I don't know. I ain't never was well, into getting married and that stuff. I'm 33. This is my first real situation. Okay, but but at and 33 now it's time uh, to go into a mature relationship. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so I know that you met at Pride. Um, 
I think you proposed I on proposed. another Pride Day, right? I proposed our anniversary oh, was on Pride. That's what made me think about yeah, it, okay? Yeah, so I proposed, the, I said, if I make it a year, because they say it only takes 30 days to form a habit, if you could do something for a year, you could do it for another 10 years. So I said, if I make it to a year for being in a committed relationship... Were you committed at that time? Barely. <laughs> Barely. Well, I mean, if barely. <laughs> it's so, the most as committed I could possibly be, Yana. I was committed to this man. I was faithful to this man. He cheated on me. Now, we, like I told him from the jump, we had a conversation about, before he even proposed to me, we had a conversation up until that time. And I told him, I said, I don't think I'm ready for marriage. He wanted to, you know, proceed and mm -hmm. go forward because mm -hmm. he likes to do things for the outside. The proposal was nice. He had Tamar sing to me and everything. One of my favorite singers, she sung to me. Oh, you had a time. big, big family thing. So I had a big thing. thing. Right. And, I was, and the thing is this, I was shocked because the night before we had an argument about him proposing to me, and I told him, I said, I don't think I'm ready for marriage. Then we get to the club the next day, and then he proposed to me. Were you ready? At no. the time, I was not ready. But... Can't be. As time went along, I, you know, I made myself ready. We are so not are you happy in the decision that you made? Yes, I'm, I'm definitely happy. And, and like, don't get me wrong, this is, a, this is a good man. It's just he has to slow down with the things that he, he throws at me and the things that he expects me. Like... You know, I'm glad you brought that up. That's something that is actually in your court papers. You say you're not the same and not the things same. that you want to do elevate the relationship, but the things he wants to there do you bring go. it down. We want to eat. I want to go to Five Star. First thing he asked for is, y'all got shrimp fried rice? I just put my lunch order in. And that's what you got? I ordered fried rice. I ordered extra so that I could have it tomorrow morning for my breakfast with my two fried eggs. That's ghetto. I, not, no disrespect. I just, I just, <laughs> and, and, and then you the judge and getting shrimp fried rice on the window. <laughs>
he likes to, he want a relationship like Beyonce, Jay Z, and all these uppity people. What you got? These, these materialistic uh, relationships. What you got? I don't do materialistic. If I bring you a car, a balloon, a teddy bear, High you should appreciate that I even went and took my time, my day to do that for you. One moment, because y'all did come to me. <laughs> His expectation of over the top is not unreasonable. Mm -hmm. Your ability to give him your best over the top mm -hmm. is what you're in control of. You can do better than going to CVS or Walgreens and getting a card. Mm -hmm. You can. You can do better than that. Mm -hmm. And when you're doing something nice for your partner, you do what they like. Do you understand what I mean? Right. I know that holidays don't mean as much to some people. But again, like I'm biased about the fried rice, I'm very biased about birthdays and celebrations. Mm -hmm. Please. That's what he's saying. Yeah. So that's the way you compromise a relationship. And then, Your Honor, he that came up with a whole... I submitted the Ten Commandments, Your Honor. And that's what we want to talk about. Yeah. Now. Be spontaneous and be responsible. And work toward your career goals daily. If you'd like your case to be heard on Divorce Court, call us toll-free at 1-877-311-2222 or log on to our website at divorcecourt.com. Missed a show? Watch full episodes on our streaming platforms and follow us on social media for exclusive content. I'm kind of just tired of covering for him. Like, certain places we go to, our, you know, I would have to lie like, Oh, you know, the barber, she, he did this and he did that because all of their friends is, is bragging. Like, I cover for him the next day for Valentine's Day. They, were, they wanted to see what he had, of course. I had a cabin. We was far away. He didn't have nothing to post for content. So what I got myself for the mall, I gave it to him and I said... Okay, Mr. I, Outler! <laughs> I'm nothing to post for content! Exactly. He made a whole... Well, I wanted to... I did, the, who, honor, he made you a whole post. You ain't post for content? You ain't post your flowers, your roses, your chocolates, your cars, your houses? You ain't post for content? See, he likes to date for social media and for content. I don't date for social media and content. Is that true, Mr. Allen? Yes. Everything is video. No, no, Everything is content in my life. Everything. Is, and is that the way you want to live your life? Is that what you want? That's what I want. He knows that. Okay. Mr. McKenzie, is that what you want? No, I'm, a, I'm We're a very never private. going well, to agree. Very, I don't want nothing to do with I'm it. A very, <laughs> I'm a very private person. Okay. Ooh, he might need to find him an older man that's with that then. Okay. I'm not, I'm not really, I'm Mr. not really with you making me cheat. No, Mr. Outler, what you have just said is a very honest thing. Mm -hmm. But we have to face reality of who this man is. Mr. McKenzie, it's absolutely right that you want to have a private relationship, if that's the kind of man you are. Mm -hmm. There's nothing wrong with that. I honestly can share with the both of you, the more private you keep your relationship, the more protected the relationship is. And don't get me wrong, I love this man. I, I want to be with him for the rest of my life, but it's just like, I need you to respect me, and I need you to respect what I want out of life. I don't want what you want out of life for me. I want what I want, and I've been doing this for a long time where I went to high school, college for dance. It's like, maybe I'm at a point where I'm tired of dancing. I'm getting old. Yeah, my, 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 my knees run low. <laughs> Mr. Yeah. Outler, listen to your and husband. Ooh. He never listened. It's just I have my, my mind focused on other things. Did you hear your husband? <sighs> your Honor, if it ain't about Vogan, he don't care nothing about it. That's all he want to do. Why aren't you using your... Mr. Outler, he just told you. I have known your husband for 15 minutes. And 40 and, seconds. And I... I don't think you know I have listened to him tell me more about who he is and me hear him than you have. I want the best for Sir, him. Sir, Mr. Adler, he's a grown, whole human being. Okay, so, you cannot so take somebody to the altar the and then expect him to be altered. So throw away dance. You don't went to school and learn how to do all your cliches, throw it away. It's actually... But a plie, not Thank a cliche. You. Thank you. And like he said before, I vote. I, I do ballroom. So I still do. And that's all he cares Sir. about. We take trips, okay, to all of these places out of state. He go to Paris, okay, to Vogue, major platform in this Vogue industry. All of this energy that you do for these panel of judges, this house of Revelon, you need to do the same thing for your husband. I'm sick of it. I'm tired. But so you're telling me that you're and telling me... he's going to follow these Ten Commandments. Wait, you're oh, telling sorry. me that the intimacy is not 
happening the way you want it either. It's not. Well, you probably have sex more than me, Tell. Tell. Yo, I don't... submitted Chick Commandments. Oh, I know. I you see right them right here. We got to get at least, two, at least twice a week. I see it. You all are not compatible. Mm -hmm. Period. Period. You can't agree on basic stuff. They say that much they... less the things that are going to be much more serious in life. And then, uh, Your Honor, he that... came up with a whole. I submitted the Ten Commandments, Your Honor. And that's what we want to talk about yeah. now. Yeah. Please look at them commandments. Okay. Ridiculous. Mm -hmm. So, I'd like to know what are these commandments for? If we, you say we're not compatible, this should make us compatible. So this are these what you're telling me? These are your must-haves. Oh, we'll be back. Yeah. What is the list, sir? Learn how to cook, mm -hmm. especially banana pudding. That's my favorite dessert. Keep going. Sex three times a week. Is that all right? Plan dates and time, place and attire. Be spontaneous and be respectable. Actually, I think you wrote responsible, but next. Thank you. <laughs> be responsible. Excuse me, my eyes are a little cross. Get gifts for both holidays and anniversaries. And work toward your career goals daily. Save your money and be romantic. Buy your own ring because you lost two of them. And if you lose your third everything ring, got to be ah, that everything I bought you, then it's over. And I'm done. Honor, everything got to be and church. I'm done. I am this why I don't done. take this man serious. And if everything serious. was church, I wouldn't be with you. This why I don't take this man serious. Mr. This Mr. McKenzie, you I'm, heard I'm... his Ten Commandments. And I will say this to you very seriously. I don't know how seriously you all were taking this, but I take love very seriously. Very. Loving someone unconditionally does not come with rules or commandments. That's a recipe for resentment, and it's over. I'm letting you know that now. Mm -hmm. You are not compatible. You don't want the same things that he wants. He wants more than you're going to be prepared to give. If you want to enjoy yourself in a fun and frivolous relationship with this man, please continue to do so. But if you're looking for a relationship in the long term that's going to give you happiness, it's not going to be with him. I just don't understand how you telling him that we're not compatible. Let I'm the trying judge to speak. This is Excuse me, Mr. Alzer. Pablo. You came to me as a plaintiff. You came to this courtroom, and I'm gonna tell you, reasonable expectations are trust, love, kindness, security. That's what's called reasonable expectations. The vows of marriage don't have anything to do with the things that you have listed here. The vows of marriage are compassion, respect, responsibility, love, Honoring and cherish. I got all that. Excuse you me. Love? You have a list of silly, frivolous demands of someone that you say you love. Instead of running your mouth and shouting with silliness in order to keep this man, you'd have to learn what real vows look like, sir. And real vows are not in that gray folder. Real vows don't demand that the person you love live his life in the public. Real vows say, I will protect this relationship above all relationships because I love you that much until you're prepared to say that. I tell you, tear them damn commandments up. Hello. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you so much, Your Honor. Okay, so we got we over. Talk to the Your Honor. You never gotta worry about me coming in this city. Shady, got the honor they got what I asked for. Thank you, Your Honor. Well, we had church for the first time in court. Uh, he was preaching, but he was preaching the wrong thing. And preaching to the wrong choir. Listen, if this man is not interested in the silliness mm -hmm. of the commandments from Flex, right. then he better flex his own self to another person. Absolutely. He needs to find a new congregation yes. that will follow the commandments. And he could just go to the ball and sase, sase, tante. <laughs> you, know? you don't even sound right saying that. <laughs> <laughs>